and there are five simple basic principles I have outlined here. Number one is the principle of seeing and hearing. If you want to be a faith giant, the first thing you need to do is to create a very strong padlock on the gate of the eye and the gate of the ear. Whether you like it or not, you become what you see and hear. There is nothing you can do about it. Anything you see and anything you hear, that's what you become. Japheth was quoting a scripture a moment ago in 2 Corinthians 3.18. I don't know if it's Japheth or Jeffrey. He said, we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. He said, we are changed into that image from glory to glory as by the spirit of the living God. The word change there is the word metamorphose. It's not just change of mindset. It's actually metamorphosis. The way an egg of a butterfly changes to a winged creature. That's what will happen to you. When you see and hear things, after a while, what you will become will not resemble what you were before you started seeing and hearing. Because sight and sound has the power to engender metamorphosis. And this is why if you want to be strong in faith, you must master to in conditioning the things that you see and the things that you hear. In Romans 10, 17, it said, faith cometh by hearing. And it said, hearing by the word of the Lord. So anybody you see who is full of faith, he is full of faith because he is hearing only things that engender faith. You can hear what creates fear. You can hear what creates faith. The choice is yours. When we were much younger, the devil sent some uncles. You know, some uncles are agents of darkness. <laughs> to, to, to tell us how that there are spirits in darkness. So the moment they take light in the room, you are paralyzed. You are Anywhere you are looking, it's like a creature is standing like this. And they mentored us to live in fear until fear became our programming. Meanwhile, we were living in a country where they take light more than they have light. So sometimes, seven days, you have, they, they beam light for five minutes, for ten minutes. And I'm not talking about Abuja. I'm talking about the, the, the villages where the ration light, maybe light will come to your area for two hours in 14 days. That means we were used to living in darkness. So in the evening, you'll see us cleave to somebody. Not because we want to keep fellowship. It's fear. You can't be alone. And fear became our operating system. Even when we grow up, fear followed us, tormenting us. Steps we needed to take in life, we couldn't take. Decisions we needed to make, we couldn't make. Because our system had been reprogrammed to live by fear. Imagine if they told us when we were two, that we could cast out demons. Imagine if they told us when we were five that spirits obey when we give commandments. Imagine what our lives would have turned out to at a very early age. But we heard the wrong things. Because the same way fear, faith comes by hearing, fear also comes by hearing. You must make up your mind to hear and see only what empowers you. And you know something else? Your psychology is designed to protect you. That means your system wants to hear bad news more than it wants to hear good news. And that's why bad news easily goes viral. The moment anything looks bad, your whole system is awoken. It's designed that way to protect you. Because if you get the signal, you can escape. But that is also a great disadvantage because now you are predisposed to receiving what is negative much more than what is good and impactful and so anybody who wants to walk by faith you must guard your ear gate don't be too prone to hearing things that scare you don't be too prone to hearing things that make you want to do evil because not too long you will do them 
you cannot deny what you hear and see you must become it he said faith cometh by hearing and he said hearing by the word of god in mark 5 25 to 27 you see the story of the woman with the issue of blood you will think her solution came because jesus carried too much anointing no I will show you the foundation of that woman's solution. He said, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. Verse 6, 26. He said, and had suffered many things of many physicians. <laughs> you know what this means? Sometimes you go to the hospital, they say, take blood sample. A nurse will just bully you with needle. And <laughs> the other time, somebody almost slapped a nurse. Are you, an, are you a student? Will you tear my hand because you want to get blood sample? They will insert it and pull it out and clean it and insert like a dagger. I, this is human body. What are you? <laughs> Hope you know, Mephibosheth became paralyzed. <laughs> because of the person not seeing him. They take your money and then they are bullying you with needles. Sometimes they come and say, sorry, uh, we will change your drugs. You say, which one? Oh, what do you mean? You gave me drugs, I took it for two weeks. You come, you want to change all the drugs. So as... <laughs> After taking drugs for six months, they will now come and say, oh, we didn't see something during the diagnosis. So what happens to all the chemicals that I put in myself? Doctors are trying. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But they are men. They are men. So the Bible said this woman suffered many things in the hands of physicians. And the Bible also said, and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. If a demon is involved, there's nothing a doctor can do about it. That's why more than 80% of the sicknesses in the world don't have cure they only treat that means they manage it for you there's no cure for blindness there's no cure for deafness there's no cure for high blood pressure there's no cure for diabetes there's no cure for hepatitis there's no cure for schizophrenia there's no cure for cancer meanwhile you all your faith is in a doctor congratulations but verse 27 here comes the good news. When she had heard of Jesus, this is where her answer came from. The reason that woman was able to conceive that if she touched the hem of his garment was because of what she heard. If she didn't hear enough, she would have said Jesus must lay hands on her. If she didn't hear enough, she would have said Jesus must come to her house. But based on what she heard, if this thing you are saying is true, I don't need this man to even know I'm around. So you, you can carry your faith to any level based on what you hear. The woman heard something about Jesus and she said, no, if these things are true, then it will be a waste of time and effort for him to see me. He doesn't need to see me. And she came from the back, touched the hem of his garment. And when you hear and faith wakes up, God knows. And the power of God located her. So your own faith too can be jacked up. The question is, what are you hearing? So the reason you think that Jesus must appear in your house is because of what you have heard. If you hear enough about Jesus, his love, his faithfulness, and his power, you will be shocked that you will become a faith giant. You are not weak in faith. You have not just heard the right things. If you hear enough, anything can be possible to you. Because faith responds to what you hear. Imagine a woman who had been in a circumstance for 12 years. Terrible circumstance. Jesus didn't need to direct power towards her. Jesus didn't need to encourage her. Jesus didn't need to know she was around. Jesus was not even coming for her. Jesus was going for another business. But the woman interrupted Jesus because of what she heard. Because her faith became a proponent of what she heard. Why do you think the devil is littering the world today with bad news? 
with fearful news because he knows that your faith anchors on what you hear so you he will have you wake up and hear hopelessness fear for the for 10 years and a point will come you will become what you have heard this is why you can even go to a miracle service god is moving but it will be difficult for you to think god will reach you because you have heard too much negativity you have heard too much fear for you to assume it can be you jesus went and gathered fishermen who were rejected in society who nobody knew anything good could come out of and he carried them with him and he kept bombarding them with words kept bombarding them with wars kept bombarding them and they kept seeing the supernatural they kept seeing the supernatural now these men were some of the most faithless men that existed many times jesus looked at them and said oh ye of little faith in fact if you read matthew 17 jesus called them you perverse generation jesus got irritated at their level of unbelief he called them a perverse generation he called them people of little faith he called them people of no faith but jesus knows the secret keep seeing keep hearing keep seeing keep hearing and as he bombarded them to a level a point came he left when jesus left you think it's over suddenly the men rose up and became faith giants because you can't deny what you have seen and heard john said what we have seen and heard declare we unto you if you want your faith to produce results please censor what you hear and censor what you see your life depends on your faith look at the life of abraham in genesis chapter 12 abraham encountered god and god promised him six things he couldn't become because this thing is in level as you are hearing you have to also graduate to seeing after promising him 12 if you hear some of these promises you'll be wondering why would god be so generously predisposed towards this man now the lord had said unto abraham abraham get thee out of thy country out of thy kindred from thy father's house unto the land that i will show thee hear the blessings i will make thee a great nation so god turned abraham to a nation number two i will bless thee that means i will empower you to prosper because the word bless means empowered to prosper so anything abraham touches must work if your business is failing make abraham a board member the moment is part of that business the business will start working he has the power to make things prosper number three god said i will make thy name great so if you go somewhere and you are rejected tell them abraham sent me if you add the name of abraham the door must open i will make thy name great and it didn't stop there thou shalt be a blessing so if abraham speaks to you something will change about your life four things go to the next verse i will bless them that bless you so in case you didn't reach abraham to be able to use his name for him to be able to talk to you stay in your house and say father bless abraham abraham you are a blessed man abraham you are a great man because you have blessed abraham the blessing will trace you so you don't even need to meet abraham to be blessed just bless him you will be blessed send a gift to abraham that's enough you will start in, in growing because i will bless them that bless you and if you make the mistake of cursing him termite will eat all your farm produce in one night termite all the termite all the termite in the house of the Chaldees will visit your farm they will eat everything first you will go into poverty because you cursed abraham and he said indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed will be blessed and abraham was not one of these things because at one level you hear at another level you must see it's a protocol and when god knew that this guy couldn't do this thing in genesis 13 14 he now called him he said lift up your eyes look around you 
I want to give you the whole earth. See it as your own. And Abraham looked around. He said, I've given you everything you have seen. So it began to down on him when God said, in this are all the families of the earth. Is the earth, is the real earth God was talking about. Look around, north, south, east, west. That's what I'm talking about. When I say the earth, I'm not talking about another planet. Is this one you are in. See it and take it. And even that of a child that he couldn't believe. In Genesis 15 verse 5 to 6, the Bible says God brought Abraham out and said, look at the stars. He said, if you can number them, that is how your descendants will be. And the Bible said, Abraham believed God. And it was counted to him for righteousness. There are some who hear and believe. There are others who need to go forward and see. So they see, not physical seeing now, but seeing what God is showing them. And as they begin to see it, their faith begins to come alive. The problem we have most times that makes it difficult for us from walking in, for walking in faith is that we are not seeing things consistent to the direction God is taking us to. We are not hearing things consistent to the direction God is taking us to. When I knew that my path was to become a preacher and a leader, I gathered my life around preachers and leaders. My friends will tell you, if I'm listening to anybody who is not a preacher, maybe he's a president of a nation or a president of a conglomerate. That's why from a young age, you never catch me dressed carelessly. Never. I didn't see any leader dressing carelessly. I, dress, I was teaching in a secondary school. Sometimes I wore suit, three-piece suit to go to class. Three-piece suit. I will be using chalk to teach with suit. And people will look at me and say, Oh, God. Uh -uh. Is it not chemistry? You're coming to... The chalk will spoil your clothes. Will spoil... My clothes rather get spoiled than my destiny. Because I was seeing myself as a leader that the world will listen to. And I don't know when my stage will appear. I went to teach mathematics with three-piece suit. When I'm done teaching, I come out of the class, walk with my shoulders high. My salary was 25,000 naira. My suit sometimes is a burden. Is a burden. But I was deliberate. Some people who come to school is the shirt they brought from market yesterday. They wear it with a jean. Everything is rumpled, and they come. They don't care. They are still there. But those of us who were conscious of where we were going, we are no longer there. And if I want to open a school now, I can. The reason I haven't is because God has not told me. You have to be deliberate. I looked at all the world leaders making impact. Sometimes I will sit in the room for hours. I'm listening to speeches that these guys are delivering. I'm hearing the speech of Martin Luther. I'm hearing the speech of Barack Obama. I'm hearing the speech of Winston Churchill. I'm just listening to these guys listening to these guys abraham lincoln any little clip i find the way they come out with audacity the way they walk with assurance and you are seeing these things after a while your personality is being formed and when i leave them i enter the ministers of god i'm seeing the pastor chris i'm seeing the andrew Womack, i'm seeing the bishop Oedeko, and i'm just seeing them doing wonders casually and i'm hearing their stories Hearing their stories, how somebody just went to see a friend and they met somebody who is bedridden. They say, get up. I say, what? You don't need to prepare for a miracle service to raise somebody from the bed. Something shifts on my inside. And I kept feeding myself with these things. I kept hearing, I kept seeing. If I was a businessman, <laughs> see, you need to pay the price. Christianity is practiced. That's how you build your faith. I can tell you a lot about some of the businessmen in the world today. From how God, how, how they rose from the cradle. From Bill Gates to Elon Musk. I can tell you a lot about them. I sit down, I hear them talk. I hear their stories. But you come to Africa in particular. Somebody's on TikTok. He's watching dance. How that people are naked online dancing and then on Sunday he dresses piously and comes to church 
spend three hours, goes back. He thinks or she thinks she will change her world. And because we are told that this week you will prosper, we say, I'm holding that word. This is my week. Meanwhile, the mind is full of garbage. An Arabian prince was talking the other day. He said, the TikTok in China is different from the TikTok in Africa. If you go to China and you own your TikTok, you will never see anybody cracking joke or dancing naked. You will see different mathematics competition. You will see people who are making impact because they want to stir their people to think mathematics. But you come to a place where there's no vision, there's no regulation. The government takes money, spend it, show them anything you want to show. And a generation plunges into the pit because we don't know how the world works. If you like, go to Babalola's mountain and pray there for 40 days and 40 nights. If what you are seeing and hearing is wrong, you will become what you see and hear. It is the law of faith. You become what you see and what you hear. If God himself had to mentor Abraham to see, to become, God, this is not a prophet. You think you can just appear. You see people, they put dark screen on their phone. They hold it like this so that you don't see what they are seeing. If you like, hide it. Your manifestation will show us what you have been looking at. Carry somebody's phone. There are four passwords. Not because of anything confidential. Because if you open it by mistake, what we greet you is pornography. Meanwhile, he's the head of prayer unit. Is a leader of ushers, but phone must be locked. If you if you see it by mistake, he said, Wait, wait, wait. What am I waiting for? Because the content cannot edify. And so people hold their phone like this. They are on earpiece 247. Because you can't hear the dirtiness of what they are hearing. Even they are ashamed of what they are seeing. And the outcome of their lives become a replica of what they see and what they hear. Faith is born from what you see and what you hear. Number two principle of faith is the principle of speaking. Why what you see and hear makes you. What you say makes your word. What you see and hear builds you. But what you say builds your word. If you want your environment to be consistent with your vision you must talk it to being notice that in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 when the world was in chaos the spirit of god was moving nothing happened so you can fall under the anointing either when you are praying or when they are praying in church you will stand up from there and be the same the only thing that has the power to reconstruct your world are the words that you speak or the words spoken over you this is why you must become careful listen when you become mature you find out the things that work and you pursue them it's young people that are overly emotional there's no point coming for a service you fell down you rolled on the floor you cried and you didn't catch any word neither did you speak any word into that atmosphere you stand up and you go home when you finish having that good feeling, your life will return to status quo. When you start growing, the moment the Holy Ghost begins to move, you start talking. Whether in your bedroom or in a service, the man is teaching or they are praying and you see the Holy Ghost begins to move. Either in your heart or in the atmosphere. Immediately, you don't have time for caricature. Quickly, if you know you can't remember them, write them down. Carry it out and start reading it. I decree over this business, this hair business, in the name of Jesus, you are prospering. I decree over this visa, visa condition, the gates of nations are open. I decree over my health, cancer, die. Hepatitis, die. High blood pressure, die. Because when the spirit moves, that's when you talk. So the reason we pray, the reason we worship, is so that the waters can be stirred. Let's fertilize it with words. Because faith responds to speakings and these things are principles see the elders know this so they are deliberate about it that's why you see that most of these men spend more time declaring did you not hear what paul said he said when you gather together 
and you speak in tongues he said let somebody interpret he said that's when it will edify the congregation he said otherwise prophesy he said try as much as possible to prophesy more because that is you creating your word so for those who have understanding when you spend time praying make sure you balance it up by making declaration people lie down they cry for two hours wake up clean their eyes they go and they they don't know why they are not going forward they pray in tongues for three hours when they finish they go <laughs> if you have created an atmosphere for five hours you will not impregnate that atmosphere with prophecy you leave that atmosphere to just vaporize and then you leave you said i've dusted five hours you are a baby if you pray in tongues for five hours you should prophesy for at least one hour make sure the bandwidth of that atmosphere is fully utilized before you go away because the way faith works is that your word is created by what you say if you don't say you will not see hear what paul said second corinthians 4 verse 13 he said according as it is written he said they believe and have spoken he said we have been the same spirit of faith we believe and therefore what was he speaking go down to verse 17 and hear what paul was speaking these guys are wise men you think they are joking from verse 15 he said although the outward man perishes he said the inward man is renewed day by day in verse 17 he said our light affliction are but for a moment he said but they work for us an exceeding weight of glory why we see not the things that are temporal but the things that are eternal the man knew how it works so when he said we speak he created his word that's why i quoted for you from romans 10 6 he said the righteousness that is of faith speaketh of this wise there must be a speaking a faith is involved but many are not aware you check their lives 90 percent of all they have spoken is negative and evil and that's why the outcome of their lives become negative your present manifestation and experience is an aggregation of your past communications you are exactly where you prophesied you didn't miss anything this life you are living now is a summation this is a report card of what you have said in the last 10 years your present experience is a report card of the con aggregation of your speaking and if you are hoping to have a better tomorrow better talk it now if you don't talk it you will not see it. the bible said god said let there be light and there was light and god saw it that it was good if he didn't say it he won't see it it's a principle of faith this is why when you tell christian christians hear the right thing speak the right thing they think you are being religious no this thing is a principle even the people of the world know it you never catch any global entity telling you he will fail even when it's not working they tell you relax it is where they don't know what will happen but they know if something good will happen they must talk it in job 22 29 he said why men are cast down he didn't say men say they are cast down men are actually cast down he didn't say stand up because if you stand up you will fall he said why men are cast down first of all he said you say there's a lifting up you must mentor yourself to speak what you want to become people may think you are being braggadocious that's their business god knows your heart that you are not trying to appear big you are not trying to create impression you are just deliberate about creating your tomorrow my friends know seven years ago ten years ago we kept singing it we will shake this world 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 we will impact this world we will glorify God in our lifetime we said it we didn't appear here by a gift we talked ourselves to this place where we are pastor Chris said your mouth is given to you to talk your future to program your destiny if you don't say it you will not see it because what you say is what you will become what do you think the devil keep even Jesus speaking he said take no thought saying that means the way you carry a thought is by talking it 
and he warned it if you say it it will happen so be careful in fact jesus was speaking in matthew 12 32 he said every idle word the man speaks he will account for it because the danger is that anywhere you become a legitimate participant you can impact the corporate existence of that place so the reason this country is the way it is primarily is because we are bad leaders we can't deny that fact but also it's because all of us have contributed evil sayings over the country that's why jesus said he will hold you responsible because we are all co-creators with god he created us in his image so what we say become and that's why god warns against idol speaking the word idol word used in that scripture is agos rema it means negative speaking or unprofitable speaking so when you say negative things or you say unprofitable sin things god said he will hold you responsible because the reason your life is the way it is and the reason your environment is the way it is is because you talked it into being say why men are cast down say he said let no one in zion say i am sick it's not because there are no sick people in zion let no one in zion say i am sick this is not denial of fact this is refusal of fact to dominate you so when you are sick it doesn't mean you go and speak say i am not sick no by his stripes i'm healed so you talk what you want to see and as you keep saying it it will become it's a principle of faith the business is failing and you decree by the power of the holy ghost this business is working if you study genesis chapter one if moses did not write it write it you will know there's darkness god didn't deny the darkness he came he saw the darkness but what he was interested in was light let there be light what he was interested in was green plant let the green plants appear what he was interested in was the animals let every creeping creature come out of the earth so he knew the chaos but he didn't talk about it he kept saying what he wanted to see and the more he said it the more the world was rejuvenated redefined and reconstructed but see the problem with christian somebody has pain on the head he will tell a thousand people my head i have pain i have pain if you say you have it who can take it from you so we are not teaching you to deny that there's no pain yes there's pain by his stripes i'm healed the holy ghost lives in me so he quickens my mortal body i live above pain by the power of the holy ghost and as you are talking it after a while the first field of faith will open simple principle but many have not learned it and some people think you talk faith when you are in church when they go to their jobs they go back to status quo you don't talk faith when you are in church you talk faith all your life he said they just shall live by faith in your room talk faith on your job talk faith with your friends talk faith when you do that you create a world it's a principle so powerful yet so simple but the devil gets people to speak only the wrong things in romans 4 19 the bible said abraham abraham sarah was barren abraham was impotent he said but abraham refused to consider all of that he said he staggered not at the promises of god through unbelief he said he was strong in faith what was he doing how did you know his strength giving glory to god so the way you know the strength of a man's faith is what he says in the face of crisis and what he says is what will bring him out he was strong in faith god help you to master this thing early in your life oh you'll be shocked how your life will change you'll be shocked how your life will change all this is not working i don't know what it will be like go and edit your language edit it if you want to succeed in this life and make impact better edit your language i don't know where things are going i don't know if it will work oh it's not working hi things are bad edit it and replace it with prophetic words that's how it will work if something is not working in your life instead of jumping up and saying it's not working blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor is seated in the seat of the sinners nor is standard in the seat of the scornful but his delight is on the law of the lord on this law doth he meditate day and night he is like the tree planted by the rivers of living waters he produces his fruit in his season 
glory to Jesus, I'm a tree planted by the rivers of living waters. I produce my fruit in my season. You have answered, it is not working. But you now answer from the realm of faith. That's how a faith man speaks. It's not when you are in a miracle service or you are preaching to people, you now start forming faith. I decree it will work. It will work. Does it? Uh, your life doesn't suggest that you believe what you are saying. Your life doesn't suggest it. If this is how you are living, it will affect you first. So don't allow poor puppet make you start emergency faith. Leave it. Leave it. And when it impacts your world, when you stand on the puppet, it will be natural. It will be not. It's not something you are trying to act. No, that's your realm. That's how you live. That's how you live. This is how the elders live their lives. Why do you think God told Abraham, change your name from Abraham to Abraham? It was a principle of faith. Don't call yourself a Zoom father. Call yourself the father of nations. Why do you think he changed the name of Sarai to Sarah? Don't call yourself a Zoom mother. Call yourself mother of princes. Call it. Imagine how fun it will be for their neighbors. Because you are calling Abraham. It doesn't, you think it's a name. But in the Hebrew, when you say Abraham, you are saying, I am father of nations. And they now say, ah, ah, first son has not come. You are now nation. Talk it, talk it. That's how you create it. Spiritual things are not a fluke. They are definite realities. If you know it, you can repeat it anywhere, anytime. I heard Pastor Chris said something that blew my mind. He said, if you like, take me to a wilderness. I will repeat this thing I've done there. And this time, at a shorter time. Because I have mastered it. I'm no longer an apprentice. I have mastered it now. Take me from Nigeria. Carry me to Congo. Come back in three months. You will be shocked what I would have built. I have mastered it. And that's why I told my people here. Watch. After a few years, unless God commands me, I will live here quietly, alone. Take somebody. Take charge. And go to another place. Check me after a few years. I will leave all of you here, all the workers, all the pastors, everybody, and go to another place alone. Let me enter that city. Find me in three months. And this one we are doing that has taken one year, two years. It's already slow. By the time I go to another place, maybe I move to Zambia, or I move to Zimbabwe, or I move to Malawi. Come in three months. What you will see will blow your mind. Because the more you do it, the more you are perfected in it. The more you do it, the more you gain mastery. Those of you who practice faith, hope you know what you were struggling with five years ago is now child's play. That's how you grow. Never catch yourself saying the wrong thing. See, if you say the wrong thing, repent. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. How did I say this? In the name of Jesus, I am not this thing I've said. And say the right thing. Teach yourself like that. After six months, check your life and tell the difference if you can the faith the righteousness that is of faith does what speak it it speaks faith is never quiet faith talks and it's in talking that faith changes the world the third principle of faith is the principle of action when you have seen and heard when you have spoken then you get to walk where necessary James chapter 1 verse 22 to verse 25 see what the Bible said I'm trying to help you deal with some things tonight because when we finish all the scriptures you have been hearing and jumping and shouting you will face that scripture and you will draw from that scripture and you will start dealing with circumstances one after the other for 5 to 10 minutes we will deal with issues here and if your faith is steady enough, give them timelines. Timelines. When they were teaching us how to grow in faith, they told us to start giving timelines to things. So that when they happen, we will convince ourselves that they are not coincidences. So somebody comes to you and said, this thing is wrong. In seven days, except I am not called. Hey! When you go back, your heart will now be beating. Did I add, if I'm not called, what if it doesn't happen? The Holy Ghost will keep quiet. And sometimes it doesn't even happen. If it doesn't happen, you go back to God and pray more. It will not fail again. It will not fail again. It will not fail again. You'll come back. You'll have a growth. If by tomorrow that growth is still there, I'm not called. After a 
why the percentage begins to grow from 2% to 5%, to 10%, to 15%, to 30%, to 40%. And then you sit down, somebody calls you, ah, you prayed yesterday, you said this will happen. I didn't know I woke up this morning, it happened. You say, yes, it should happen. If it doesn't happen, we will be surprised. It's supposed to happen. That's why we said it. They will say, thank you, man of God. You feel like a man of God. You are practicing, you are learning. You are learning, you are growing. Don't talk fear what you want to see and you are not just talking out of positivity you are talking the word of God that's the difference between you and the world system this is not positive thinking and positive talking this is proclaiming scriptures proclaiming the Rema word to create the word you want to see the third principle is the principle of action he said but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves he said for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgeteth what manner of man he was so he said if you are not doing you can't retain you can't become you can't be blessed the next verse is say, but who so look at? That's why I say we are not just talking positive talk. We are talking the word. And who so look at into the perfect law of liberty and continue it daring. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. He said, this man shall be blessed in his deed. When you see, you talk and you do. In Acts chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 speaking about Jesus he said he gave commandment to his disciples and how did he do it of all that he both began to do and to speak so you do what you say don't only talk in talking there is no power except that it is backed up with doing this is why we discourage people don't just talk lofty things when you talk go to work your action is the proof that you believe what you said. In James 2, 19, 20, I've quoted this to you several times. He said, thou believest that there's only one God. He said, thou doest well. He said, the devil also believes and trembles. The, the devil believes more than you. In fact, in his own believing, he trembles. Most of us believe God and cross our leg and say, Jesus help us. The devil trembles. That's the level of believing. The problem is that he believes but is rebellious. He doesn't do what the word says. He doesn't obey God's commandment. He doesn't act out God's word. The difference between your own faith and that of the devil is that you act God's word. You obey God's word. You live God's word. Verse 20, see what he said. But we thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. We will take this word and you have not started evangelizing your neighborhood how will you appear in taking the word father we will stand we will stand in stadium. we will pack out stadiums for you from stadia from one nation to another nation everywhere we go stadiums will be packed Sta do you know the size of a stadium have you gone to your backyard to win souls have you won any soul in your neighborhood and you want to gather people in the stadium how will you do it so faith must be backed with action. We will raise the dead in our generation. We will cast out demons. And people are excited because everybody wants to raise the dead. How many sick people have you prayed for? Because you are in a service and the atmosphere is charged. You start declaring. Declaring things that you don't believe. In this lifetime, even eye, eye sockets that don't have eyeballs will grow out. Unless we didn't come here. We will not go until the world see the power of God. Power. When was the last time you went to pray for a sick person? When was the last time you went to the hospital? We just say things that are lofty and we enjoy it. It's better you go more to do and talk less than to talk and do nothing. In verse 26 of James 2, it says, Faith without works is dead. Listen, everybody you see doing mighty works of faith saw something, heard something, said something and did something 
nobody appears everybody grows through the rank i was telling you on sunday how i started building faith first they taught us around our finances they told us you don't have an amount of money except you can give it to god what what do you mean and they showed us scriptures how people gave to god the day abraham gave isaac was the day he possessed isaac if you can't give it to god you don't have it yet and they were they taught us how they also grew and from that day we started building faith for finances you gather your first one thousand you give it you gather because you can still be giving to god at other times but you are talking what you can give once you gather your first ten thousand you give it to god you gather your first fifty thousand you give to god you gather your first hundred thousand you give to god and i kept doing it migrating 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 and i can show you different aspects of my finances from giving god hundred naira to giving god one thousand to giving god ten thousand to giving god twenty thousand fifty thousand hundred thousand one million ten million twenty million and we are growing once and your faith is now big money can't move you they started teaching us all this thing of squeezing offering throwing the offering basket you are not serious you go to a church even the general of Azia, offering he folds one thousand dumb and you want that work to grow <laughs> you are joking pastor chris taught us how he prepared his offering he prepared it you don't come to church and give offering spontaneously no it is prepared you come with it honorably and give because it's called offering to god it's a seed of worship it's not something you squeeze in your pocket and no it's deliberate really i started and before now the holy ghost was already talking to me because when i was in the university i started with 10 naira he said give 10 naira wow 10 naira if money is in my pocket and i want to go to church i remove the trousers and we are another one so that god me and god will know that i didn't come to church with money and god battled with me until i started giving one day and now i was serving in kanu state and i saw the pastor his name is pastor victor ego he wanted to give offering he carried hundred thousand and gave i say what i mean we don't do services in a week how can you give hundred thousand for off uh, is this a okay i said no maybe it's prophetic seed so every sunday i came i sat close to watch him i wanted to be sure because i didn't know what this guy was doing the guy will come for service remove hundred thousand put in the envelope and give remove what i said what well you, did you go to christ embassy sabongeri what hundred what is going on here i went and jacked my offering from 50 naira to 100 naira <laughs> i started i started giving after a while the holy ghost told me you have been here for too long i moved it to 1000 when i did 1000 one week i came back my my pocket sank i said can this one is for workers it's for <laughs> it's not for coppers it's for workers the lord kept pushing and I started giving. You would think when you do it, your money will finish. It's a joke. The faith realm is inexhaustible. The more you grow, the more established you are. The more you grow, the more established. I started giving 1,000. After a while, I moved it to 2,000. After a while, I moved it to 5,000. Until things started shifting. I moved it to 10,000. I moved to 20,000. I moved to 50,000. I moved to 100,000. Ask yourself, how many services are attended in a week? whether here or outside this place where is the money coming from it's coming from faith you know what it means to give hundred thousand for offering <laughs> it's not a wish it's a growth and i can tell you that the first one is the hardest the first one is the hardest but as you start growing you start entering cruise mode cruise mode cruise mode and before you know the money will be coming from where you don't know from because god now sees that your resources are advancing his kingdom he creates more channels creates more channels create more channels that's how you grow we stand now we say in the name of jesus you are healed now stop if you are healed come you think it starts like that i remembered when we have to gather and pray for people with headache pray for four hours you lay hands on them 
it doesn't work. You tell everybody, let's do corporate anointing. All of you lay hands. It still doesn't work. You carry the matter, pray overnight and come back. Before you get to a level, they say somebody is demonized. Now we can go. We say today is a demon. Let's go and fight. And we will go pray in tongues with a demonized person for six hours for demon to leave the person. If the person is manifesting, we are happy. The demon has not gone. Home. That we are able to stir that demon to manifest. It means there's something. There's something. So sometimes when you are manifesting, we say, wait, allow this person. Allow this person. Allow this person. <laughs> because that's a milestone. That we are able to trouble that demon. Leave this person. Wait, come, come on. Get back. Get back. You start moving around. And you start discerning the spirit realm. Sometimes you pick a song. And you are singing. Something has started. Manda kabakaroa, velele adia, vuvakida bakai, ezezonia, barakados, tevekida adaka. You speak some tongues of victory. Then you come back. You devil, where did you come from? Answer me now. If the person speaks, hey, mako erekika, tuvakaya, we rule the demonic realm. I command you now, talk to me. Where did you come? When the demon is cast out, then you don't even have discernment to know when the demon leaves. When the person comes down, you, you check, you check. You pray in tongues for a while. If nothing happens again, you say, let her rest. Let her rest. You don't go away like a man of God. Let her rest. Let her rest. And then for that month, all your messages, you will speak about how you deal with demons. How you deal with devils. When you see a demon, don't joke with a demon. Go there like a warrior. Deal with that demon until you book out that demon out. No demon must be left behind when you are finished. And then you now grow. A point comes. You show up, you say, in the name of Jesus. No drama. Come out! Sometimes they don't even have manifestation, but they go. And you know, and the person's life change. And then sometimes you show up. The moment you come, the demons begin to scream. And you look at them. They know. They know what you mean. You point at the demon possessed. You do like this. The person will struggle and struggle and fall down. You will not talk. And the demon will go. But you grew. You apply it with your finances. You apply it with your ministry. In the area of dealing with demons. Even prayer. You go to pray. 30 minutes is like 10 hours. But you will not leave. You stay there. I have read about prayer. I have preached prayer. Now I must pray prayer. And you pray there. You check your watch. It's 7 minutes. Kakobe. Lele. Lele. Thank you, Father. 12 minutes. Manuka. Over, 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 over. Yako, baka, baka, baka. You now sense the anointing. You check. It's 22 minutes. Then the rest of the time, you now start singing. Then you are trying to read 30 minutes. You sing until 30 minutes you go. But you will not stop. You will keep praying. You will keep praying. You do that for one month. After three months, the next time you check time is 45 minutes. Ah. How did I reach here? Muscles are already growing. Make it to Next time you go to preach about prayer, you tell them, if you cannot pray for 40 minutes, you are joking. You don't know what prayer is. Melia freketali kakagata. And you are pushing. You are pushing. After a while, you go to pray. You check. One hour, 15 minutes. Makura. Now we are ready to pray for the nations. The mantle of prayer has rested. Zene kumakira. You are now praying, you tell people, listen, listen. This prayer thing is not a joke. How can you be a Christian, you can't pray for one hour? What are you doing? You mean you can't pray for one hour? What kind of Christianity is that? How are you surviving? We breathe by prayer. We breathe by prayer. When you want to take a shot, a shot of prayer is one hour. Come on! And you are pushing. A day now comes. Oh my God. When the momentum begins to rise. Nenda Efelakaya. Ragida Ore Banasta Vikaka. Only your warm-up is three hours. Three hours. Melika Stafikra Takaparak. 
the dadida on Draki Park, Savakiro, you are rocking your room, and sometimes you do vigil alone. You don't need congregation, only you. You start praying from 10 p.m. Manta, Parakada, Sudakaya. When you are finishing, it's 5 a.m. It's the ray of light from your curtain that will tell you it's daybreak. And you go, even while you are going to work, you are still praying. Manta Riata. By this time, you have grown in prayer. There is no teaching of prayer you will hear to pray for 10 hours. There is no preaching you will preach prayer to pray for 10 hours. You can only grow in prayer by praying. Because faith is action. And so any dimension of faith you want to see, be it finances, be it casting out devils, be it prayer, be it giving, you must practice and be deliberate. Listen, watch your progress. Watch it. Do you know how the prayer thing works? After a while, when you start praying for long, you will now move from time. Because when you gym, it's not how many hours that matter. It's the weight you can carry. So now you want to pray, you now write prayer points. I want this person to become pregnant. I want this person to become married. I want doors to open for this person. And as you go to prayer, you are praying those things. That's how you dream in prayer. After a while, you hear that that person is married. After a while, you hear that there is breakthrough. You know something is happening. And a point will come, you don't need to intercede for it to happen. You can walk up to the person and say, before this year is over, you will settle down. Because when you pray, prayer will move and become an atmosphere. And then when you keep praying, the atmosphere will crystallize and become a mantle. So you can carry it anywhere. Carry it anywhere. But you see, you engage it. Faith is action. You don't engage it, you never become it. Any dimension of it, this is Christianity. You can be anything in God. Just put it to practice and remain consistent. Those who taught us, told us, inconsistency lies the power you may be praying about something today you don't have answer keep dreaming that's a wait the first time i went to the gym they said do deadlift i could only carry 40 kg i held it i wonder i said hey, hope my spinal cord will not break what's happening here i dropped it quickly they had to reduce it i was carrying now i can carry 80 kg a time will come where I will carry 200 200 I will lift it that's when I will now snap picture and when I reach there my muscles will now report that this man is carrying weight that's how faith works when the faith begins to grow the manifestation will become more you will lead in prayer somebody receives encounter you are leading prayer growth vanish from somebody you are needing prayer mestra pain ends and people will say oh when peter was praying when peter was praying all the other ones leading prayer will now say ah, ah we will also pray here what is the size of your muscle faith is action sit down let me round up oh christianity is more about daily living than coming to church only. you come to church to be equipped but the real Christianity is daily living daily apply faith in every aspect of your life every sometimes we are compared to share these testimonies they are not things we would speak on a normal day but so that you see the practicality we saw something we heard something we said something and we did something that's how faith works the, the third principle of faith is the principle of action the fourth principle of faith is the principle of a conditioned atmosphere faith works in atmospheres anybody who knows faith will tell you if the atmosphere is not right, faith will be immobilized. Lastly, the last principle of faith is that the purpose of faith is for God to be glorified and for humanity to be helped. That's the summary of ministry. God empowers you so that you can glorify him and help humanity. So see, when you are before a cancerous patient, don't be troubled. 
God sent you to help her. There should be no battle of ego. Oh, if she's not healed, I'm not a man of God. Forget those things. If you are stirred and you want to make a declaration to inspire them, go ahead. But the whole idea behind praying for the cancer to go is for you to help her so that God will be glorified. So when you are going anywhere, tell yourself, I'm going to help humanity. I'm going to glorify God. And even if the person is not healed, at least you have shown them compassion. That is something. Paul planted, Apollos watered. God gave the increase. You are going to a territory to pray for people who are demonized. You are going to help. You are not coming as Jesus Christ. You are only his representative trying to bring them the love, the mercy, and the help of God. If you see it that you are a helper of humanity, also trying to glorify God, it will take pressure and anxiety from you. The reason most times we are under so much pressure is because we think this thing is about us. It's about, so there is a fight of ego. No. You may not be a bishop. You are at your workplace. Somebody fell down with asthma. I'm not a pope. I'm not an apostle. I'm not Jesus. But I know that if a Christian prays, somebody can be healed. Can I pray with the person? You pray. You are only offering help. If the person is healed, glory to God. If the person is not healed, that's the best you can do at that time. That's the level of help you can offer. Thank God and go away and keep growing. If you know this last principle also, it will help you to walk in faith and to walk effectively. Have you been blessed? Can we pray for five minutes and deal with some things? Now, assuming you have a growth or you have a blood condition, how do you apply this principle in dealing with it? Don't look at the blood condition. Look at the cross. And remember the gospel. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we were healed. So before you start praying, make sure you turn your attention from the problem. Turn your attention to the cross. I told you, you have to what? See and hear. So see what Jesus has done and let the message come to your heart. You are shifting the burdens to God. Is that okay? When you begin to see the cross, then make declarations. Every symptom of cancer, every symptom of this pain, in the name of Jesus, be gone. That's the second principle. You speak. And then the third thing, what do you do? After you have made declarations sufficiently, lift up your hands, glorify God, begin to do what you couldn't do. That is your action. And as you are doing what you couldn't do, if the devil wants to bring fear or doubt, refuse it and keep celebrating God. Can we do that for five minutes? Can we put that to work? Your business is failing. There's no money. Look at the scripture. Is it Christ? rich as he was he became poor that you through his poverty might be made rich if you see that after a while begin to declare deal with that issue in the name of jesus i break the siege of poverty i break the yoke of poverty and when you are done lift your hands take action by glorifying god and refuse to take any other thing celebrate it as if it has already happened are you ready Touched your grace, my life.